The Gerblin's been swinging a hot bat of late. Seven for his last 15. Here's the two and one. Deep to left. That ball is gone. The crowd loves it. I've never heard this much generic goblin noise. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Also, just so you know, all orders over $10 or more until January 28th, 2019 at 11.59pm will be entered to win their chance at a Ravnica Allegiance booster box. It's one entry per person, so good luck, and be sure to let me know what you open. In today's game, we have three new faces and a bunch of old commanders. First up, we have Zack playing his Hazazon deck, keeping a forest, two mountains, Seasons Past, Wooded Bastion, Sylvan Library, and Iris. We have Joe, who's new to the channel, playing his Reese deck, keeping two planes, forest, Elf's Best Son's Champion, Slate of Ancestry, Tendershoot Dryad, and Swords to Plowshares. Next up is Nick, who's also new, playing Zergo, and he keeps a mountain, a Soul Ring, Gift of Estates, Burnished Heart, Rout, Demonic Tutor, and Pure Steel Paladin. Lastly, we have Tommy playing Tesa, and he's keeping a Marsh Flitter, Skull Clamp, Rot Lung Reanimator, Swamp, Plains, Soul Warden, and Bitter Blossom. Nick wins the die roll and starts us off. Nick plays a Mountain, and we see a turn one Soul Ring, because that always happens on my channel. Joe plays a Plains, and out comes Rice. Zack plays a forest and passes to Tommy. Tommy plays a plains and he casts Soul Warden. Nick has no land for turn 2, but he's able to cast Burnished Heart, which is something, and Tommy gains 1 as it enters. Joe plays a forest and he casts Amara, Soul of the Accord. Tommy gains 1 from the Soul Warden trigger, and moving to combat, Joe hits Zack for 1 with his commander. Zack plays a Wooded Bastion and he casts Sylvan Library, passing to Tommy. Tommy plays an isolated chapel, and he casts Bitter Blossom. Moving to combat, he follows Joe's lead, and he hits Zack for one. Nick draws and moves to combat, hitting Tommy for two with his burnished heart. He then passes to Joe. Joe draws her turn, and moves to combat. He swings his commander at Zack for one, and Amara at Tommy for two. He also gains a soldier token from Amara being tapped, which has Tommy gain one life as it enters. Zack uses his library trigger, and he looks at the top three cards, but keeps no extras. He plays a Sun Petal Grove as his land for turn, and passes to Tommy. Tommy loses one in his upkeep to the Bitter Blossom to get a fairy, and then immediately gains it back thanks to the Soul Warden. He plays a Swamp for his turn, and he casts his commander, moving to combat. Before attackers are declared, Joe uses his Swords to Plowshares to exile Tesa, which gives Tommy two life. Nick also decides that missing lands is bad, so he sacrifices the Burnished Heart to go and find two basics. Tommy then hits Nick for one with the Soul Warden, and he passes. Nick casts Demonic Tutor in his main phase to tutor for a card. He grabs and immediately casts Sword of the Animist, which is a pretty good way to ensure you hit your lands, assuming you have a creature for it, and he passes to Joe. Joe plays a Forest, and he casts Slate of Ancestry in his main phase. He moves to combat once more, with Rice going at Zack for one, Amara at Tommy, and a Soldier at Nick. With Amara being tapped, Joe gains another token, which gives Tommy one life. The creatures then connect, and Joe gains one from the lifelink on his soldier token, created by Amara. Zack plays a mountain for his turn after resolving his library trigger, and we see a Sky Shroud claim. With nothing else, he passes to Tommy and searches for some lands. Tommy loses one to get a fairy, and gains it back with the warden trigger as it enters. He plays a plains, and he drops a marsh flitter, gaining one as it enters, then two more life as it creates two black goblin tokens. He swings the Warden at Zack, and a Fairy at Nick for one each. He then passes. Nick plays a Verdant Catacombs as a land for turn, and he cracks it taking one. He goes to find a Blood Crypt, having it come in tapped. We then see Zergo hit the field, and Tommy gains one life. Nick swings the Beefy Commander at Zack, who takes the hit, and Nick passes to Joe. Joe plays a Tap Scatter Groves, which I say as if there's any other way to play it, and he casts a Skull Clamp. Moving to combat, he swings Amara at Nick for two, gaining a soldier token, and Tommy gains one as it enters. Joe then clamps the most recent soldier, drawing two as it dies. He then clamps another soldier token, drawing two more, and he passes to Zack. Zack uses his library trigger again, and plays a Temple of the False God. He casts Tempt with Discovery, 
and in what I can only imagine is some kind of shared madness amongst the players at the table, everyone takes him up on it. Tommy grabs a Temple of Silence, crying one after he's done shuffling, and Nick grabs an Expedition Sacred Foundry. Zack, on the other hand, grabs some lands, but most notably, City of Shadows, a sack outlet for when he eventually casts Hazes on. Joe decides to grab a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, and once the spell resolves, Zack casts Hazes on, and as the commander enters, Tommy gains one. With nothing else, Zack passes. Tommy gains a fairy, losing a life, and then gaining a life as it enters. He casts his own skull clamp, and he clamps the newest fairy to draw two cards. We then see a foily rotlung reanimator come into play, giving Tommy another life from the warden. Tommy then moves to combat, swinging the marsh flitter and two fairies at Joe for three damage, and the soul warden at Nick for one. He then passes to Nick. Nick casts a pure steel paladin in his main phase, which lets him draw a card after he casts a sword of feast and famine. Nick then plays a plains, and he puts the Sword of Feast and Famine onto Zergo. Moving to combat, he swings Zergo at Zack for 9 commander damage, and gets to untap his land, and forces Zack to discard a card. Nick then casts an Argentium Armor in his second main phase, which now allows the Pure Steel Paladin's Metalcraft ability to be active. He equips the remaining equipment onto Zergo for free, and he remembers to draw from casting an equipment, and then Nick passes. Joe plays a Temple Garden, taking 2 to have it come in untapped. He swings a Mara at Nick for two, gaining a soldier token which gives Tommy one life as well. In the second main phase, Joe clamps a new soldier created by Amara to draw two cards. We then see a Legion's landing, and Cho makes a white vampire token with lifelink, with Tommy gaining one as it enters. Joe then moves to his end step, and has to discard down to seven. And before moving to his own turn, Zack sacrifices Hazazon to the City of Shadows. On Zack's upkeep, he gains 11 Sandwary tokens from Hazazon's delayed trigger, giving Tommy 11 life as they enter. Zack then uses his library trigger to mess around with the top 3, but only draws 1. We then see a resolved Iris in his main phase, and strangely enough, Zack casts Secure the Waste in his main phase for 6, gaining 6 warrior tokens and giving Tommy 6 more life. We then see a Goblin Bushwhacker, which explains the Secure the Waste, and it gives Tommy another life, but more importantly, gives all of Zack's tokens haste and plus one plus zero. Zack swings everything at Nick, a reasonable response seeing how much commander damage he has from Zergo, and as Nick can't readily block with Iris out, Nick dies. Tommy does the whole fairy thing, and draws her turn. He clamps a fairy token to draw two in his main phase, and then brings out Tessa. He gains one as she enters, and he passes, and at the end of turn, Joe activates his Slate of Ancestry, discarding his hand and drawing four cards. Joe draws for turn, and he clamps a Soldier token, much as Tommy did the turn before. He draws two, and plays a four as his land for turn. Joe then clamps the last remaining Soldier, or was it a Vampire, we'll never know, and he draws two more. He then pays three to cast Growing Rites of Itlamok, and he reveals Yeva, Nature's Herald, from the four cards from the right triggered ability. Joe then moves to combat, and hits Zack for three. He gains another soldier token from Amara being tapped, and Tommy gains one life. Joe then clamps his commander in his second main phase, drawing two and putting his commander to the command zone. He then passes to Zack as he discards down to seven. Zack uses his library ability this turn, and this time keeps one extra card, taking four damage to do so, and cutting his life by a quarter. Zack then drops a Cathar's Crusade, and he passes to Tommy. Tommy does his Fairy Warden thing again, and draws for turn. He plays a Swamp, and he clamps a Fairy again. This draws him two cards, but also gains him a White Spirit token from Tessa as a black creature dies. The Spirit in turn gives him one life as it enters, and Tommy then resolves a Martyr's Bond, and passes to Joe. Joe plays a Canopy Vista, which comes in untapped as he has enough basic lands. He then resolves a Wiltleaf Liege, which pumps his white and green creatures, and Tommy gains one. Joe then casts an Arbor Elf, giving Tommy another life. We then see Joe activate Nykthos, choosing green, and he generates six green from the Devotion. He uses four of it to cast a Wirewood Chandler, giving Tommy another life. And he then passes to Zack. Moving to his end step, he flips the groin rights to reveal Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. At the end of Joe's turn, Zack sacrifices the Bushwhacker to his City of Shadows. Zack uses his library trigger, but doesn't take an extra card. He casts Crater Hoof Behemoth, probably one of the most expected finishers for a token deck, and Joe responds to the hoof on the stack by tapping his Itlamok to cast Cross and Grip, and blows up Zack's Cathar's Crusade.
Tommy also decides to take action, sacrificing his two goblin tokens to the Marsh Flitter. This triggers both Tessa and the Martyr's Bonds, and he resolves the Bonds first, forcing his opponents to sacrifice two permanents that share a card type with what hits his graveyard. In this case, it's creatures. Tommy then gains two spirits from Tessa's ability, and gains two life as they enter. Tommy then sacrifices the three spirits to Tessa's second ability, exiling a Sand Warrior, and forcing his opponents to sacrifice three more creatures each. That's all Tommy can do, and the Crater Hoof then resolves. As a result, all of Zack's creatures gain plus 11-11 in Trample, and Tommy gains one. Zack decides to swing two tokens and a Crater Hoof at Joe, while the remaining eight go at Tommy. Joe dies to combat damage, and Tommy figures even if he blocks, he's probably going to die either way, and we move on to the next game. Game review time. So, I feel like Nick kept a super greedy hand early on, but my goodness did it pay off. Had anyone been able to remove the Burnished Heart or the Soul Ring early on, I think he was up a creek with no paddle. Thankfully for Nick, it didn't happen, and he started pounding face on Zack with Zergo, which was kind of cool to see, especially once the Pure Steel Paladin hit the field and was drawing him cards and letting him gear up Zergo with some free equipment. It was a bit of a surprise to see how bad the crackback was from Zack, but that's the way that Hazus on tends to operate. They'll build up, build up, build up, build up, then boom, someone or the entire table's dead, and Zack did just that, with minimal disruption. Joe and Tommy did catch on, and they were digging deep with their respective skull clamps, and in Joe's case, his slate of ancestry. He did discard a pretty good hand, but let's face it, Elspeth's son's champion wasn't going to do a whole heck of a lot of good against one ones. It also seemed pretty crazy that Tommy died, despite his enormous health pool. I do know the guys didn't count it up, and they instead just decided to move on to the next game, but Tommy was facing down 88 points worth of damage, so even if he did block, unfortunately he's probably dead in the swing back the next turn. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.